Hi friends. So we are going to discuss some radiology related questions which were asked in an INI set recently conducted exam. 30 year old patient. So this is a young patient, right? Presented with progressive difficulty in swallowing, which is more for liquids than solids. This is a clue. Barium swallow was done as shown in the image below. What other investigations should be done, right? In order to determine what investigations to be done ahead, we must be thinking of a diagnosis. Let us pick up the clues in this particular question. Dysphagia is an important clinical clue. If there is progressive dysphagia for solids more than liquids or liquids more than solids, right? If the dysphagia is more for solids than liquids, then it suggests a diagnosis of CA esophagus, right? Then you will have to do a endoscopy and a biopsy. But if it is liquids more than solids, as in this case, right, then it would suggest more achalasia. So you'll have to do an endoscopy and a manometry, right? So it was liquids more than solids in our question. So probably it was achalasia. Let us look at the image. What do you see? In this image, we can see that there is a smooth elongated tapering at the lower esophageal sphincter, right? Like a bird's beak, there is no mucosal irregularity. That is because the lower esophageal sphincter has failed to dilate and therefore this is typical of achalasia cardia. So there is a classic triad of achalasia cardia which consists of which consists of dysphagia along with regurgitation because of the stasis of the content there along with weight loss. So dysphagia, regurgitation, weight loss. Dysphagia in achalasia cardia is remember is more for liquids as compared to solids initially later on the dysphagia becomes equal for both solids and liquids so investigation of choice for achalasia cardia remember is a barium swallow study where here you can see the typical bird beak appearance there gold standard investigation if your examiner asks you then remember it is going to be a endoscopy and manometry to measure the actual pressure right within the esophageal lumen earliest and most common symptom right of this of uh, achalasia cardia is usually regurgitation remember so these are the important factual MCQs that we have discussed. Few clinical insights about the dysphagia pattern in achalasia and CA esophagus is what we have discussed. So these barium spotters, this is an absolute favorite of your examiners. Why? Because recently again, another question was asked, right? And so it was an elderly female presented with progressive dysphagia for solids. That is a clue. Solids more than liquids is CA esophagus. Patient has weight loss, there is loss of appetite. Barium swallow is done and is shown there. What do you see on barium swallow? So on barium swallow here, in this particular image, right, we can see that there is an abrupt narrowing with a lot of mucosal irregularity. So this is not a bird's beak sign, rather this looks like a rat tail irregular abrupt narrowing with mucosal irregularity. So therefore, this is CA esophagus. So this was carcinoma esophagus. Look at this image very carefully now. There is abrupt short segment narrowing lot of mucosal irregularity because there is a mass circumferential mass there the surface of the tumor is irregular so that is what is giving rise to this mucosal irregularity pattern so this is what is called as the rat tail appearance of ca esophagus now for ca esophagus if they ask you what is the overall investigation of choice then remember it is usually endoscopy that is esophagoscopy and a biopsy right if they ask you what is the imaging investigation of choice for staging then remember it is usually PET CT which is preferred but if they specifically ask you what is imaging investigation of choice for TN staging then the answer will be endoscopic ultrasound right so overall investigation of choice is endoscopy and a biopsy Imaging investigation of choice overall for staging is PET CT for TN staging specifically if they ask you then it is endoscopic ultrasound. Not just this another question was asked right recently and that was again a barium swallow image see patient presented with neck swelling regurgitation with gurgling sound when pressed over the neck barium swallow was performed see there is a 
diverticulum arising from the esophagus it is a posteriorly located diverticulum so this is very likely to be a zenker's diverticulum so remember that zenker's diverticulum right is an esophageal diverticulum at the site of the kilian's dehiscence it is directed posteriorly and posterior laterally anatomically it is located above the cricopharynges there is another esophageal diverticulum which is known which is anterior or anterolateral inferior to the cricopharynges and that is called kilian jamison's diverticulum so remember zenker's diverticulum is always posterior the most common complication related to zenker's diverticulum right is that the food content here may get aspirated later on so aspiration is the most common complication related to Zenker's diverticulum. So see, barium studies is an absolute favorite for your examiners. Study GI tract, genitourinary tract, uh, barium studies, conventional uh, imaging modality techniques, you know, just before your exam, you are expected to get around two questions from these topics. So see, coming back to our question, young patient, progressive dysphagia, more for liquids. Barium swallow shows bird beak signs, so the diagnosis that you are considering here is what it is achalasia and for achalasia what will you do you will do an endoscopy and you will do a manometry so a endoscopy upper gi endoscopy right and manometry is the answer in this particular patient yes in this particular question now see this was a very typical question there are four chest x-ray images which were given patient presents to the casualty following blunt trauma to the chest a chest x-ray is done among the following radiographs in which case would you further evaluate the patient before putting a chest tube this is a excellent question this is actually see four diagnosis your examiner wants to he wants you to make then he wants you to think about those diagnosis in which case would you want to evaluate before you put a chest tube you, he wants you to determine in which case you are going to put a tube directly and in which case you need some evaluation going ahead so this is a classical two-step application based question classic two-step application based question first step is making the diagnosis now see look at the first image now what do you see this is a typical image of a opaque hemithorax now an opaque hemithorax could be because of underlying pleural effusion it could be lung collapse or it could be complete lung consolidation right i will put a tube in pleural effusion i will not put a tube in collapse i will not put a chest tube in consolidation so what is this how can i say See, definitely the lung one right hemithorax is completely opaque. How to distinguish between them? To distinguish between them, I will have to look at the mediastinal shift. Pleural effusion will push the mediastinum to opposite side. Collapse will pull the mediastinum to same side. Consolidation will cause no shift. So see here, watch carefully. Where is the trachea? The trachea is here. As it comes down, it is pushed to the opposite side. See, can you see that? So therefore, what is the underlying abnormality here? Underlying abnormality, because it was a case of trauma, is very likely a hemothorax or a hydrothorax traumatic, and therefore I can put a chest tube in here. What is this? I can see a round lucency or a black area. What can be lucency? Can it be a air-filled cyst which is called as a pneumatoceal or could it be a air filled bleb or a bulla as a result of trauma or could it be say diaphragmatic rupture and there is a big bowel loop say stomach in the thorax could it be in all of these cases i cannot put a tube directly right i will need some evaluation or some imaging investigation right further and most likely i would want to do a ct right so i'll not put a chest tube what was the third image now third image was see visceral pleural line air within the pleural cavity so the diagnosis is clearly pneumothorax 
right? We have seen this image before. Similar image was there. And what is the treatment of pneumothorax? There is no mass effect. So it is intercostal drain insertion. So I will put a tube in this particular patient. What is the fourth image? The fourth image is this. What do you see here? In this image, watch carefully. There is free air under dome of diaphragm. If there is free air under dome of diaphragm, diagnosis is what? Diagnosis is pneumoperitoneum, probably some bowel perforation, right? Now, in pneumoperitoneum, I do not need an intercostal drain tube insertion, right? So definitely, I will not put it. I will evaluate first, you know, by using using some techniques, maybe it's doing a CT, right? If look at some solid organ injury because there is perforation, that is all right. But it is a case of trauma, so there could be liver injury, there could be spleen injury. Patient is stable, I can do a CT. Some type of further evaluation is going to be required. So definitely, ICD tube is not required. So coming back to the patient, let us look at the images one by one. The first image is hydrothorax or hemothorax related to trauma. Will I put an ICD tube? Yes, definitely. That is, we saw that there is mediastinal shift to the opposite side or there is fluid. We can put a tube inside. Second is probably diaphragmatic injury, probably a bulla, probably a pneumatocele. Will I put a tube? No. Definitely not some evaluation would be required. Third is what? Third is visceral pleural line air within the pleural cavity. So this is pneumothorax. Will I put a chest tube? Yes, a chest tube will have to be put in right for treatment of that particular traumatic pneumothorax. What is fourth? Fourth is air under the diaphragm. So it is pneumoperitoneum. Definitely an intercostal drain tube would not be required. So in this case, therefore, in which case would you further evaluate the patient before putting a chest tube will be case two and case four. And this was the answer to this particular question. This is an epic question. This is a classic example of a you know, two-step application process, right? This is something that you'll be able to achieve as you look at more and more and more clinical situations. You try to gain more and more clinical insights. And that is where, that is why we are here to help you with these types of questions. Well, friends, insight without action is actually worthless. We discussed clinical application based question, right? And I told you that the way to crack these questions is to try and solve many much more of these, right? And only that way, you know, you can get better at this. So now that we have looked at some clinical insights and you're, believe me, you're getting to, going to get, you know, innumerable such pearls or real beauties of insights and concepts when you go through all these discussions, you know, of all the other subjects as well. Once you have these insights, what is needed from your end, the next step is action and that action is to completely push yourself into your preparation get away from all the distractions with a single minded a single aimed single target based you know preparation strategy for the next few days weeks and months is what is going to get you that dream rank and dream pg seat of yours we are all with you till that point in time all the best